The testimony that we heard is a, um, what we heard from the Ledger Council is all three of these have some serious constitutional and First Amendment and due process problems. Um, one of the due process problems I'll pick on domestic violence first is there is no resolution as to how you might be able to get your weapon back within that five day period. So therefore you have no due process whether you've been falsely accused or not. Um, the other two would fly directly in the face of the Sportsman's Bill of Rights, although you'll hear the other side um, say that that's not the case, and, but notwithstanding any the other provisions of law means basically you just gutted the Sportsman's Bill of Rights. Question. On the liquor part, everybody says, why in God's name would anybody support um, not having a law that says guns and alcohol don't make? Well, let's go over a couple of three little quick scenarios. If you live in Burlington and you uh, have a uh, wedding for your daughter in the backyard and you hire a caterer, guess what, folks? Alcohol is being served. Wow. Under a license. Jeez. Under a license. Yeah. Your weapons could be confiscated. Um, anybody in here a golfer? Okay. You were fortunate enough to get uh, invited to the Burlington Country Club to go play golf. And you happen to be a person who uh, carries. Well, on a golf course, because they have beverage carts, okay, beverage carts, for those of you who don't know, are carts that bring around beverage. They generally will serve you beer, but it is still what they call across the counter. It is a class three license. So that means that while you're out there playing golf, you could be charged with a liquor violation for having a weapon inside a restaurant. The other part, let's say that you're walking down Church Street, outdoor cafes. Now, I don't know anybody else, but I don't think Berlin is the safe city in this state. And you choose to protect yourself. You have to be walking down the sidewalk having no intention of being a patron that sidewalk bridges between where servers go and the establishment, which means everything in between is considered part of their license. So without being a patron, without wanting to do anything, just walking down that sidewalk, you can be charged under this rule. Is that if you um, arrive back from a trip or on your way to a trip and you know you gotta get to the airport probably Pat can speak to this if you have a weapon you need to be there an hour and a half before the flight because you have to do some special stuff with TSA. So you get you get there and the TSA's not ready for you or whatever you decide that you'd like to have a sandwich and a coke. You bring that into the airport lounge upstairs, you would be in violation and you could receive up to a twenty five hundred dollar fine. And then, would the state be on the hook? This is a big one. Would the state be on the hook to help defend any challenges? The last challenge that we did real good, it only cost the state $4 million. We lost. We lost. And we lost. Cost me zero. Right, so these are three separate bills. So if you look at that, and that was six years ago, <coughs> or so, that's a $12 million that you potentially put the state at risk for. Um, and I could go on and on, but I won't. I will say to you, as a caucus, that the only thing we need to hear is that it's unconstitutional. It flies in the face of the sports and bill of rights. That is really the only reason you need to vote no on these charges. The other reasons are great. We, don't, we shouldn't even have to vote there. 